Good evening, everybody. It is Thursday. Oh, it's not Thursday. Hold on a minute. Back up, back up. It is Tuesday, November 24th, 2020. Welcome to our weekly devotional time together tonight. As you know, Thursday is Thanksgiving, so we are having it on Tuesday this week. But so glad you are here, whether you have joined us on the phone, on Zoom, or online. And reminder to anybody on the phone to style star six to unmute yourself. And good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hey, Joey. Good evening. Hey, Judy. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about y'all? We're good. Don't be surprised if you open your suitcase in Vermont and I'm in there. <laughs> I'm, I just envy you going up there for Christmas. I know I'm I'm excited but a little apprehensive as well. So just keep me in your prayers. Definitely well, so. Just hope you enjoy it. Thank you. And about eight, nine, ten inches of snow. Yeah. Oh, could be more than that. Could be. Bring some back. Yeah. <laughs> I think they got about 10 inches last night up there. Wow. So it, yeah. They're they're only about five, ten miles from Canada. Wow. Oh, okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, if you just bring back two or three or four inches with you, that's fine. You know. Okay. <laughs> <That'll work. laughs> All right. I think we've got the traveling Dismukes on the phone with us as well. They have not unmuted. Are you there? Star six. The last I talked to him, they were traveling hey. through Atlanta. How, how is that? There you go. That's better. <laughs> okay. How are y'all? Uh, Mary, Mary Jean was having trouble with the difference between a star and a pound. <laughs> it was upside down. <laughs> oh, here comes Pat in here. Uh, Let's let her in here. Hello, Pat. Yeah. Star six. Now are y'all in the, Are y'all traveling? Or are you stopped somewhere? Hello, Pat. Star six. <laughs> uh, hey. <There> she is. <laughs> I had to get my cornbread in the oven. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> We're coming over to your house afterwards, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think if I if I hang a right here on seventy seven, I believe I can be there by the time it comes out of the oven. <laughs> yeah. Y'all well, got through it. Hopefully. Well, uh, hello to everyone and greetings from I twenty. All right, uh, Alabama. We are. Uh, Somewhere in between uh, Oxford and Lincoln, I think, uh, we would have been home uh, 30 minutes ago had it not been for an hour and a half traffic jam in Atlanta. Wow. Uh, so uh, we, we left last night at 5.30 or 5 o'clock. Got to the hotel around midnight, got up at 6 this morning, finished on driving down to Tampa, turned around, and still driving. Wow. Uh. So, uh, fun, fun, fun. So, it's good to, good to hear everybody on. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, just... Uh, uh, if you would just remember us in your prayers and hopefully we can get a good night's rest tonight uh, when we get home. And uh, before uh, I forget or before I pass out, uh, I, I wanted to just mention to everybody that uh, I, I think that uh, what we're going to do is try to uh, go back to church this Sunday uh, unless something drastic happens, and if it does, we will let you know, hopefully by Friday. But uh, 
anyways, we'll, uh, things aren't looking great, but the limited number of people that we have and the situation that we have at the church, social distancing, masks, hand sanitizer, all that kind of stuff. We're going to, we're going to give that a shot come Sunday. Uh, and uh, unless something bad happens. Uh, so, uh, we, if everybody's okay with that, we'll, we'll give it a shot. And, uh, unless you hear from us, that's what we're going to do. How's that sound? Sounds good. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, I would like to, uh, if you know anything about me, you know that it's almost impossible for me to pray with my eyes open. <laughs> but given the fact that I am uh, uh, going at 70 miles an hour surrounded by vehicles, I think I'm going to try to pray with my eyes open tonight. <laughs> uh, I thought that I would open it, open us up with a word of prayer and uh, turn it over to uh, Joey and whoever uh, to do that. And then I'll close this with prayer at the end. I don't have my uh, prayer list. So if anybody has any, they want to mention specifically, if not, we're going to pray for everybody on that list back home. I so, do, uh, do want to say before I forget, I talked to Linda Potter yesterday and uh, she's back staying at home. She said that was a very hard thing to do, but she knew she had to do it sometime. So she just jumped in and, and went home and she appreciates all of our prayers and wants us to continue praying for her because she's, it's really difficult right now for her and her girls. And uh, we're all gonna miss Harold greatly. So she just wanted y'all to know that. Okay, great. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, if you would, let's bow our heads and we'll open with a word of prayer tonight. Not you. Most gracious. Excuse me. Don't close your eyes. No. Uh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings of life. Uh, and we thank you for uh, this Thanksgiving season. We ask you to help us all to have grateful hearts. Lord, we're thankful for all that you do for us. And Lord, we ask you to bless our time uh, that we have here together tonight. Lord, we ask you to watch over Joey as he leads us in our devotion. And Lord, we, we thank you for the Horton Bend <coughs> United Methodist Church family. And ask a blessing on all associated with it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, all right. Um, and I believe Jerry's going to help me tonight as well. Um, and if, if, any, if anybody else wants to read one um, any of the days, please feel free to. Um, we will let you do that for sure. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started. And I kind of do it like we did last week, if that's all right with everybody, just kind of we'll read one. And if anybody has any thoughts, we'll uh, just open the floor up and have um, have those thoughts shared. So we'll go ahead and get the screen going here for people that can see it. And do this. All right. So here we go. If everybody's ready. We will start <laughs> with last Friday, which was uh, November the 20th. And it's day one of our week this week. I go ahead and mute, and mute everybody now. And a reminder, if you want to comment later on, just unmute yourself. Just hit that star six on the phone or the, uh, the microphone button there on Zoom. So uh, follow along with me as we read November 20th, which is titled, A Pillar of Fire. And the scripture comes from Exodus 13, verse 21, which says, The Lord went ahead of them by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. And the devotional says, Backyard bonfires are one of my favorite childhood memories. Recently, my neighbor had one in her yard. The air smelled like smoke from burning wood, and the dark summer sky glowed orange as flames crackled and popped. 
with the brilliant blaze of man emanating from my neighbor's yard, I reminisced about family gatherings and marshmallows toasted over a smoldering fire. I remembered the, my father stoking the flames as a pillar of fire illuminated the sky. Beyond my childhood memories, the bonfire bought, brought to mind God's guiding the Israelites at night in the desert. God became a pillar of fire to give them light that kept its place in front of the people. The Israelites received God's guidance by following a pillar of fire. And we received God's guidance by practicing spiritual disciplines. After my husband had a heart attack, I was lost in a desert of fear and anxiety. I received God's benevolent guidance through prayer, memorizing scripture, and writing in my journal. These practices led me to God's calming peace so I could cope with my husband's illness. God's word promises that the Lord will guide you always. Whatever challenge we're facing, when we ask God to send light and truth to guide us, God's guiding light will shine on us. And amen to that. And uh, the uh, thought for the day, what spiritual disciplines help me to follow God's, God's light? And that came from Deborah Pierce in Massachusetts. And the prayer focus for the day was someone recovering from a heart attack. Let us pray. Faithful God, thank you for your guidance as we traverse life's unfamiliar paths. Amen. Anybody have any comments on day one? Kind of brings back memories myself, Joey, as growing up as a kid down at my grandparents in Alexander City. And at night, all she had, all the light that we had was a fireplace. And there was a fireplace in every room. And the embers would glow at night, and just a little bit of flame. And it was just enough light to see where you were going. And I kept thinking, said, well, I'm glad we we're kind of in an enclosed area, but we know that that pillar of fire brightens the sky, and this is just a minute particle of that pillar. Yeah. And I keep seeing in the Ten Commandments when God separated the chariots from the people fleeing in a pillar of fire. So it can be both constructive and destructive as well. Yeah. The song, um, The Lighthouse, that we used to sing at church a lot, um, yes. uh, came to mind as well when I was reading this. And um, that's a wonderful song. That, um, that That's a great example. So anyone else have any thoughts? Remember on the phones, dial star six. All right. Don't see any comments coming. So, um, Jerry, I didn't know if you want to do like a me read one, you read one, however you wanted to do it. Uh, but if, if you have any one particular you want to read, just uh, jump in there. Go ahead and read this one, and I'll take the next two. Okay, sounds good. Day two, which is Saturday, November the 21st. The title is Forgiveness, and the scripture comes from Psalm 103, verses 10 and 12, which says, The Lord does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. And the devotional says, I've said and done many things I'm not proud of in my life. When I consider these transgressions, I wish I could go back in time and skip committing them in the first place. But I cannot retract my hurtful words or actions, and I cannot reasonably anticipate forgiveness from those I have offended. However, I can make a commitment to do better going forward. When I read Psalm 103, I imagine David isolated, living with the consequences of his own serious transgressions for which he offers no excuses. The words of the psalm make me believe that David regretted his behavior and but took solace in knowing that God removes and casts our sins away from us as far as the east is from the west. I like this perspective, that from God's viewpoint, our, our sins are out of sight. So when we all, when we have misgivings over our past iniquities, 
We don't have to dwell on them. Instead of living in fear or retribution, we can focus on God's loving mercy and kindness. And I think if everybody was unmuted and get an amen out of the crowd to not on that one. And that came from Tom Johnson from Nevada. And the prayer focus for this day was those regretting past offenses. And also the thought for the day, which I didn't read, says, no matter my past, God's loving mercy is for me. Amen to that again. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your infinite patience and forgiveness. Help us to extend the same forgiveness to others that you have extended to us. Amen. Anybody have any thoughts on that one? There's a lot you can pull from it, obviously. It's a wonderful, wonderful devotion for the week. Maybe not. Yeah. Hey Joey, can you hear me? Yeah, go for it. Good deal. It's kind of kind of dark. We're having a little trouble here. Yeah. Um, I, I tell you, you you have heard me say uh, many times. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of things in my life that I'm not proud of. Yep. So I can certainly I can certainly relate uh, to this devotion because of that. Uh, but I'm comforted uh, from the fact that uh, even though David did a lot of things that he wasn't proud of, uh, God still loved him. Yeah. God forgave him. Uh, and so as I've gotten older, I've tried really hard not to dwell on my mistakes. Uh, dealing with that, asking for forgiveness, and putting them in the past is a difficult thing to do. But uh, it's something that I try to do more and more every day. And I'm just thankful that uh, God loves me, and uh, and I just feel blessed because of that. Amen. Yeah. And I did say amen twice, even though you couldn't hear me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I think we can all take away something from that one for sure. So, Anyone else? All right. Guess not. And if you have any thoughts later on, then we can uh, have some time afterwards as well. So, Jerry, I'll let you take over here. Okay. All right. This was this one is for Sunday, November 22, entitled New Growth. And the scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And as far as the devotion, one morning I looked at my flower pots and I was sad to see that they were overgrown with grass and weeds because I had neglected them. I decided to tend to them, hoping to make them look more beautiful and well-maintained. The growth of my plants had been stunned by the grass and weeds, so I pulled out all the weeds and added fertilizer to allow the plants to produce new, healthy growth. When I finished fixing my flower pots, I thought, so it is with me spiritually. My life would be more beautiful if I were to get rid of the grass and weeds in me. Worry, disappointment, heartache can consume one. These grasses and weeds make it difficult for me to grow into a new creation in God. It's not always easy, but I want to continue to grow in faith so that I can glorify God through my life. I hope that as God's children, we can all welcome new growth in our faith and our lives. And that comes from Mary Goulton in West Java, 
Indonesia. And the prayer focus is to grow in my faith. The thought for the day is, what do I need to clear away so that I can grow spiritually today? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for encouraging us to grow. Help us to strive to do our best for you. In the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation, which comes from Luke 11, 2 through 4 in the NIV. Amen. I think my favorite time of the year is spring because everything is putting away the old and bringing out the new, the bright greens and the yellows and the whites of the flowers. And it just kind of gives you a, a feeling of spiritual growth and complete forgiveness of sin and knowing that the old, <clears throat> the brown leaves, the gold leaves, the yellow leaves are now gone and the new leaves are well on their way. And we can look at ourselves as a human in the same way. Can't really do a whole lot about the past except ask forgiveness, but you learn from it and you don't make the same mistake twice. And you can do a whole lot more for the future and go the right way down the straight and narrow. And if anybody else has something they would like to say, feel free to star six and do so. One quote that came to mind when you were saying that is, and that I saw several years ago and it stuck with me, is um, we look at the springtime and it said springtime, God's gift to a cold, dead world. So I thought good. that was really cool. Yeah. I that's heard it, so. That was a good one. That was a good one. Anyone else? Okay, I will go on to Monday, November 23. It's called God's Favor. And it comes from James 4, verse 14. You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? During my training as a teacher, I had to implement a reward program in a classroom. Students earn tokens for good behavior and excellent work. These were traded on selected days for small prizes and privileges. My students quickly became obsessed with the rewards, but I struggled as I watched the frustrated faces of students who failed to meet the academic and behavioral standards. The day after I finished collecting data to complete my class requirements, I terminated the token program. A student who struggled with reading came to me and said, thanks, I hated those tokens. Much of society says that we gain power possessions and privileges, but how we look, act, and perform. But that is not how we gain God's favor. Not long ago, four words from James 4, 14 caught my attention. What is your life? When I thought about my life, I realized it was time to reevaluate some of my choices. I prayed for guidance to know what to do with God, my God-given resources, and how to follow God's will in using them. I often recall these, those four words. They are a reminder that my life must embrace knowing and following God's will. And that comes from Nancy Lewis Shelton in Missouri. And the prayer focus is teachers in training. And the thought for the day is, I do not have to earn God's favor. Let us pray. Dear God, grant us the strength to resist the appeals of worldly influences and learn to live for your purposes. 
Help us to understand your will for our lives. Amen. During the reading this, I keep hearing Dr. Phil when he says, you do not reward bad behavior. And that is so true. And I, I have seen it so many times. Well, it, you know, that's okay. I mean, it's just one time. No, because you do it once and they get in the habit of it. And then they keep doing it, even though you're trying to discipline. The token situation in an elementary school is a great way to teach respect and to teach forgiveness and to teach those that will go into the workforce later by following what God's life style wants you to be. And it teaches you respect for others and responsibility for your own life and takes away a lot of the ills and the, the bad situations that might come upon you. It just kind of says, well, that's their problem. I'll talk to them later. I'll pray for them, one of the two. And it's just one of those situations where you try to teach the people a good behavior by reward. You never reward bad behavior. Do we have any other comments? Yeah, we're, we're missing a lot of that these days, it seems like. Um, so it's, it's like you said, you reward bad behavior, just, you know, we'll, we'll worry about it later and later never comes, unfortunately. So. Yes, sir, Joe. Hey, uh, hey Jerry and Joey. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this is a really serious subject but uh kind of a a little funny about this you got y'all maybe have heard me uh tell the story about uh talking to Bert Lister at Halton about how every time I would get uh the closest parking space to the door at the grocery store at the mall or somewhere I'd always joke with him and tell him that's the favor of God and uh and uh you know just joking with mary jean about it and, and i've always been very uh fortunate and blessed in, in those respects it seems like i've always gotten pretty good parking spaces and kind of joked about it but th there, there is a seriousness uh about that also um i, I feel like uh, even though i've had a lot of difficulties in my life, uh, a lot of struggles. I, I feel like I've also lived a very charmed life. Uh, and by charmed, I, I don't mean uh, lucky. I don't mean coincidental. I don't mean by faith. What I mean is that uh, I have been blessed by God and I felt like I've always been uh, subject to his favor in my life. Uh, just look at everything in my life right now. It's not because of anything that I've done, not because of any hard work I've put in. It's, it's all because of God's favor and blessings on my life. And, and, I've, and, and I feel very, very fortunate and blessed because of that. Amen. Amen. And, and I'll just say that I, I really like this being muted thing because I can yell out amen and not distract anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pat or Judy, do you have any comments? Mm -hmm. If not, we will continue on to our last one, which is for today. You want me to do it? I mean, if you want to, I mean, I, don't, I, I can do either one. I can do it. You can do it, whoever. I'll go ahead. Okay, go for it. All God's Children, Tuesday, November 24. Scripture comes from Galatians 3, 28. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. 
for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. In the mid 1950s, I was a teenager working with some men loading turkeys for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday. We worked hard putting the turkeys in crates and loading them on trucks. Then we stopped to go to town for lunch. We all sat down at one big table, but the man who owned the restaurant came to us and said, I can't serve that black man who is with you. He will have to eat in the back. I asked, why? Lafayette has been working with us all morning, the owner replied. He can't eat in here. We asked the restaurant owner if we could all eat in the back together. When he said yes, we all moved to the back room. That encounter upset me and has stayed with me all my life. Paul wrote in Galatians 3.28 that we are all one in Christ. We are black, white, and a lot of other shades in between, and God created all of us. Knowing this and remembering Jesus' commandment in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, shouldn't we all go out of our way to treat one another with love and respect? After all, we are all God's children. And that comes from John C. Geringer in Maryland. Prayer fo focus is victims of racism. And the thought for the day, anytime I see discrimination against one of God's children, I will speak up. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to recognize discrimination and to go out of our way to treat one another with the love you have given us. Amen. I saw a black man on Facebook here a couple of weeks ago, and he said, you know, I get so tired of hearing Afro-American, Japanese-American, Chinese-American. We live in America. We are American. We don't have to have a prefix to our names. We are all American. And I can, I can remember to this day in Etowah County Courthouse, one water fountain white, one water fountain black, and they were not one in the same. And I was so glad when they took that out because discrimination, my daddy's best friend was a black man. And, and you know, I've had a lot of black friends in my career at Goodyear. And there were some that were prejudiced. You could tell, you leave them alone. But then there were some who'd give the shirt off their back. I worked with one at Republic Steel one summer whose nickname was Slim, and he was as much fun as anybody. And just as nice, he wasn't black and white, he was American. He put his pants on just like I did, one leg at a time. And that's what we all need to remember. We, need, we are all American not African-American or Chinese-American, we're all American. And we can have anybody else with any thoughts on this one. Well, I agree completely with that, Jerry. And um, I will also add that um, obviously I was not around for this time period that he was, that the devotion writer was talking about. I've only read about it in history books and also heard from experiences from people who were who lived through those times as you mentioned about the the two separate water fountains um and being living in birmingham now which is the, really the birthplace of the civil rights movement of that time it's it's really made me appreciate that um, we no longer live in those times now this is my own personal belief. Um, I'm, you know, we, I don't think we fully moved on. There's still little segments of racial stuff going on out there. I think it'll always be that way, unfortunately. Um, but I believe I, I'm just grateful we don't live in a time where blacks have to go in this door and whites have to go in this door. And That's I'm right. very, very grateful that um, you know, hopefully, at some point we will become a united country again and um, red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. That, that song came to mind as well, so. Yep, all God's children. Yep. 
Morgan Freeman was in an interview one time last year, I think, and the guy that was interviewing him, they talked about racism and he asked him, he said, well, Morgan, how do you do away with racism? And he leaned over the table and looked him eyeball to eyeball and said, stop talking about it. Yeah. And that's about the only way, you know, you, you can't get rid of it if you keep bringing it up. Yeah. No, it wasn't right, but it's history. It's part of the history. You can't change it. Yes, sir, Joe. Did you unmute me? Uh, well, uh, I, I agree with a lot of things everybody said, and I, and I uh, what came to my mind is uh, uh, one of these days. Uh, it won't be an issue at all. That's right. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know that it, it'll be perfect until then. But one of these days, Jesus is coming back. Yeah. And there won't be uh, anything uh, close uh, to racism uh, when he does. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was thinking too um, about this. I, it's I've always told people, you know, they're like, "Well, I'm overweight, or I'm real tall, or I'm real thin." How everybody complains about the way they look, or just in appearances. But you know, we are all each created in the image of God, and we each are exactly the way He wanted us to be. And I can remember singing in the choir and looking out at the congregation at the hundreds of people that were sitting out there and they were singing. We were all singing together. I think it was either Easter or Christmas time. So it was a time where there was a lot of really joyful music. Um, and, and I just, the, the pastor at the time, he thanked each of us for the music that we had worked so hard on. And I thought, you know, but I got a glimpse of what you see every Sunday. Each of us, I used to go to Memphis, visit my uncle, and I would look at this painting that was at the museum there. And it was of little ballerinas, about 20 of them. And if you stood back, it was just the most beautiful picture, portrait of all these little girls in their little pink tutus. But if you got really, really close to it, it was like you could see every single brush stroke and the, all the different colors of shading that it took to create this beautiful piece. I wish I could bring it home. I could stare at it all day long. <laughs> but but when, you're, when you're singing and looking out at people as a congregation, what do you think God's going to say when we're all in heaven together and we're singing and glorifying him? Yeah. And each of us is a paint stroke. And together, collectively, what kind of a masterpiece are we going to be? We'll be his masterpiece. But each of us is created in the color and the image that he wanted us to be to create that image. And I think one day it will come together and be magnificent. Amen. Anybody else have any thoughts? Any thoughts about any of them that you may not have mentioned earlier? Get into a full discussion here. <coughs> well, uh, well does any, anybody have any prayer requests or praise reports, any of that to mention? Oh, we have Judy unmuted now. Mm -hmm. I was uh, waiting on the uh, praise report to okay. mention to everyone, they may know this already, that um, uh, now I can't think of her first name, Lori. The, the girl battled COVID for so Lori. long. Lori, Lori Woods. Lori Woods, she got to come home today, so it was it was wonderful yesterday. That's saw, a I saw that on the news last night as she spent like I think yeah. 200 plus days in the hospital. Yes, I can't imagine that. Yeah, that is definitely crazy for it for sure. Mm -hmm. 
anyone else? I think Pat may be over there eating her cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to go knock on her door. <laughs> Just Put take you a little bit of butter with you. There you yeah. go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Making my mouth water. There you go. I love when I made my my dressing. We don't eat cornbread that often anymore, but I made my dressing and put it in the freezer because I knew we were, might have this trip. And and I I had to cut a little piece out of it and put a little butter on it. I, I just love hot cornbread oh, with butter. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I offered some to mother and she didn't want it. Nah. <laughs> Now my well, daddy would, would want a um, some buttermilk with his cornbread. There you go. <laughs> I, I just had a little sample of that. <laughs> you missed the go. And my mother would cut an onion and put that buttermilk and cornbread, and that was really good. I bet that too. That's, that's uh, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, I just I just pulled up to my garage and put it in park. All right. Well, yeah. thank the Lord. Oh, I thought Good you were going to say you pulled up in front of Pat's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I meant when I mentioned that earlier, I, I I never I never heard any inkling of it, of an invitation, so I I just came on home. <laughs> I didn't know for sure if it was going to come out okay. Hey, <laughs> I was cooking two it, it, pans it, of cornbread. It don't matter. I tell you. It was so, had, so funny. My, my mom and dad, uh, you, they both make cornbread. And my mom's, whatever she did, always stuck. <laughs> and, my dad, and my dad would come out of there just as pretty as you could play. <laughs> he always used to make us a man. But uh, anyhow, well, uh, just uh, one other thing. Uh, my 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 whole mouth issue that I was having last Thursday night uh, is pretty much better, uh, and it was better by Saturday. I do have an issue, something going on with one of my toothes. And uh, I've got to go to the dentist tomorrow, so uh, y'all, y'all pray for uh, pain relief on that deal, if you would. And uh, also uh, tomorrow afternoon, I got to do an MRI on my uh, abdomen. Uh, so we'll see how it, it's for us. Just see if my hernia has come back or not. So I do that tomorrow afternoon. But uh, uh, I, I want to thank you all for, uh, for uh, your patience. And uh, thanks to Joey and Jerry for, for leading us through our devotion tonight. And uh, thanks for everybody for all your comments. And uh, thank you for your prayers. And let's uh, uh, just uh, continue to be in prayer uh, about uh, this whole COVID deal and, and about uh, us being in church this Sunday. Uh, we'll uh, uh, just just continue to pray every day for it. So, if nobody has anything else, I will uh, I will close us in prayer. And I am I can close my eyes this time. <laughs> so let's let's all bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we. Uh, are, are grateful uh, for this uh, time of discussion and study uh, as we uh, ponder on these devotions that come from all over the world. It, uh, it's a reminder to us that uh, your uh, love reaches far and wide and high and deep. And that uh, your grace, uh, your mercy, uh, your favor, and your salvation uh, 
reaches to all the corners of this world, so to speak. As we talked about last Sunday, that, that, that you uh, are patient with us because you want us all to come to repentance and salvation that comes through a relationship with your son, Jesus. And as we uh, move into this church Advent season, a season of anticipation uh, that we celebrate Jesus' birth on this earth 2,000 years ago, Lord, help us to have a, a spirit of love, joy, peace, and hope toward one another, no matter what color, no matter what political party. Lord, help us to love one another as we love ourselves and to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, everything that we have and everything that we are. For all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, amen.